Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a weekly show that broadcasts live every Thursday at 2 o'clock for 30 minutes from 2 to 2.30. We focus on successful stories in Hawaii for businesses and their owners. Uh, there's also successful individuals that we highlight occasionally and maybe some organizations that help those reach success. So today we're going to have uh, the Central Pacific Bank uh, here today. Um, we've got Susan Utsugi, who is the vice, Senior Vice President and Director of Business Banking for the bank. Uh, and as we all know, and we've all been watching, Central Pacific Bank has done a miraculous turnaround in the last few years and has done very well, and, and Susan was a big part of the reason why. So Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, so Thanks glad for having that me. you can join us today. Um, now, you born and raised in Hawaii? Yes, born and raised in Hawaii, um, from Aiea. Aiea. Mm -hmm. So you went to Aiea High School? Or? No, I actually went to Hawaii Baptist Academy. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Right. All right, and then, uh, so you, you went there, and then you stayed in Hawaii, went to college, or you went to the mainland? Went to the mainland. I graduated from Seattle University, Seattle. where I got a degree in finance. A lot of people go to Washington, don't they? Yes, it's a beautiful place. Yes, and from it's what I understand, though. I don't know about Seattle, but I heard uh -huh. that Washington U has got a very large Hawaiian club. Yes, there's a lot of people from Hawaii that live there. Yeah, it's a popular place. So you uh, majored in finance? Finance. All right, and then did you work on the mainland before you came home? No, actually, right after I graduated, I came home. I had a position with one of the largest banks here in Hawaii, their nice. management training program. Very good. Matter of fact, I think we probably worked at the same bank at one right. time. Right. You were at the yeah. higher level, though. No, well, <laughs> that's only because my floor was higher. <laughs> No, but that, it was a great training program. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, my son is actually working at the Bank of Hawaii mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. it's, it's a great bank. A lot of people who started there, and then they kind of expanded and grew and, and went in other directions. And right. so uh, great training ground. Um, but you were there for a while, and then you eventually you transferred over or was mm -hmm. recruited by Central Pacific Bank. Yeah, I was there for about 13 and a half years. And actually oh, made boss. Time. Yeah. yeah. And I got a lot of good training there, um, and then my boss moved to Central Pacific Bank, which was sort of a shocker for us, and um, you know, and brought some of us over. So that's how I got over to Central Pacific Bank. Very good. Well, I, that's happened in other banks too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then did you go over there in uh, in the lending area, or, mm -hmm. or in what role did you play when you first went to CPB? So when I moved over, I was a business banking officer in their business banking department, and. Um, I've been there now for 16 years. Wow, so. it's impressive. And, and so you've been there through the challenging times and, right. and now you're into the, the good times. Right. You know, things have, have worked really well. So it's a great experience to have gone through that. You learn a lot in that process. Right. Uh, but you have risen through the ranks and, and now you're heading up the department. Mm -hmm. um, and you're also on TV too once in a while. <laughs> that was really hard. <laughs> it wasn't. Well, you've become well recognized. I mean, a lot of people know who you are. Those, those advertisements are still running, right? Occasionally, I, um, I believe so. And it's funny because people who seem to watch Korean soap operas seem to recognize me the most. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I think we should probably talk to Catherine and say they need to renew those advertisements, <laughs> keep them going for a while because I know a lot of people really enjoyed those. Yeah. So, but now you're there, you, you become a, a recognized face of CPB, you've gone through some challenges. I mean, what, what were um, some of your experiences while you were there? I mm -hmm. mean, uh, during the hard times, I right. mean, it must have been tough, you know, to get yeah. through that. Yeah, it was tough. You know, I, I was at Central Pacific Bank since 2000, and so the bank had gone through a lot of changes, especially in executive management. And prior to going to Central Pacific Bank, I always thought it was a Japanese bank. I really didn't know the A lot history. of people thought that. Right. The executive management came from Sumitomo Bank. And so, mm -hmm. but there, there were a lot of changes where, you know, a publicly traded company and as executive management changed, the bank went through changes and then we got into our financial crisis. So it was tough. It was um, a very interesting time and I learned a lot. And um, I'm glad I stuck it out because I learned so much. And um, I think now that we're over it, thankfully, and, we, and we're very successful, um, we don't want to forget what we went through. You know, we want to learn from our lessons and... and um, you don't want to repeat history. No, yeah. But the bank really, we had to, you know, bind together. Teamwork became a big deal. That's one of our core values, mm -hmm. um, that we had to live every day to make sure that we could get through that period. And thankfully, we have 
wonderful customers who stood by us and believed us. In well, I was us. just going to mention that it, you know yeah. that it's really important to get that team together and that get that cohesiveness. Right. But you need to have those loyal customers supporting that activity too, and, right. and you had some of that. Yes. We did. I think um, if we had not been in Hawaii and had the kind of customers that we have, we might have had a different outcome. Mm -hmm. But our customers in Hawaii are very loyal, very supportive, and you know, the bank is so thankful for that. And the people that stayed and um, worked with the turnaround you know, were very loyal, too. I think we all really believed in the bank. Well, it, it obviously worked. Um, I think I don't know it as well as I should, but I know that the CPB is, is hitting some good targets, some yes. good numbers, and mm -hmm. um, it's been miraculous, the, the turnaround. Um, now, you've been there both before and after. We're mm -hmm. kind of in a, a, an evolving industry, mm -hmm. you know, and so there's constant change going on. Right. But what are some of the big differences have you seen between banking, you know, 10, 15, 20 yeah. years ago as opposed to today? Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely technology plays a big part in that. And so, um, you know, we've always had a model of relationship banking. That's one thing that we don't want to change. I think although we may not see our customers as often because they don't come in as often because they don't have to, it's still important to have that personal touch and that they know somebody that they can call and they know they can count on. Um, but certainly technology has played a big, um, has made a big difference. Well, and it's, it's changed both the front as well as the back of the bank. I mean, there, there's a lot of technology changes, right. a lot of cybersecurity issues, too, yes. that comes with that. Um, but it allows a lot faster processing of transactions, more right. immediate um, information is available. Right. You know, and so from a banking perspective, from a marketing perspective, mm -hmm. customer service level, right. I think the technology has, has played a significant role in right. transforming the banking Definitely. industry. Um, so. We've seen a lot of change in the way that banks are run from technology, mm -hmm. but also hasn't there been some regulatory changes too? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, mm -hmm. you know, from the banking days I was involved mm -hmm. and the banking days that I see today, right. there seems to be a lot more rules and regulations and, and maybe the parameters are a little bit more narrow in getting right. things done. Definitely. You know, regulation, compliance is a big issue for the bank. Um, that's been a major initiative for Central Pacific Bank. So um, it's it's um, a very regulated industry that it we is. work within. Well, and it, as it should be. I mean, right. the, the bottom line is that the money that the bank gets, for the most part, mm -hmm. is the community's money. Exactly. You know, it's the money that comes from the community and the individuals uh, in that community. Right. Uh, and it needs to be protected. Right. So after and the financial crisis, you know, the, the public needed to feel like regulation was at a higher level. Right. Bring that confidence back. Correct. Right. And so have you, I mean, I know regulation is always tough to deal with, but it seems like you guys are making it work. Well, yeah, I think because, you know, we work within the parameters that we have to, but I think um, the customer relationship is really what drives us. And um, while we have certain constraints, you know, it's a matter of knowing your customer. When you know your customer um, and you have a relationship, you can identify their, the needs and the opportunities, um, and they trust that you are looking out for their best interest, and that's what makes it work. Right, so even with all the technology and with the, the rules and regulations, it's still a relationship type business. Right. Right, and how does CPB establish those relationships? I mean, mm -hmm. you've got branches, and, and I guess you're out in the community a lot. Right. Well, so we have our branch network, and um, our branch folks um, really make a point to get to know our customers, know them by name. Mm -hmm. And one of our core values is exceptional service. And so we try and deliver that every day. Um, in business banking, um, we have 15 business bankers across the state, and they have a portfolio of customers. And their job is to be the quarterback of that relationship. Mm. And you can only do that if you know that relationship well. You know the business, yes. the business owner. Um, you even know their family members and their employees. Well, because sometimes they become bank customers too. Exactly. You that's know. what we. That's what we aspire. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. That's a. Per, I mean, that's the best way that the customer itself becomes a testimonial to bring a new business. Yes. Yeah. You know, that's the most perfect in, you know situation you can ask right. for. Right. Um, and so having those relationships and, and working with them, I, I also have found, and, and correct me if, if, if you've had a different experience, but sometimes mm -hmm. the customers don't always know what it is that they really need right. to, to maybe make things work a little bit better. And that's where 
the, the relationship comes in. You can go in and kind of educate and right. create that awareness of what the options are. Right. And that's our job. You know, we shouldn't expect them to tell us what they want. It's our job to um, have good conversations and identify needs that they have, um, the need behind the need, and so that we can then um, provide solutions that are effective. Um, that's, that's, you know, in banking, it's really a people business and it's helping people. Right. Um, you know, and, and helping them to achieve their goals, and they can be yes. personal as well as business. Yes. Uh, and so, and I know you're in charge of the business banking side of mm -hmm. things, but do you also help your customers on their personal needs too, or yes. is that something that you pass off to somebody else at some point? Well, so the business banking officer, um, as I mentioned, is a, the quarterback to the relationship. And within the bank, we offer all kinds of products and services. So that's what I like about Central Pacific Bank. You know, we're small enough where we can provide that personal attention, but we're also large enough where we can provide all of the products and services that our customers need. And so as the quarterback of the relationship, you know, you're, you're, you know your customer, and then you're pulling in the subject matter experts to surround your customer, and so become very customer-centric. But you're providing them with the expertise that they need all around the customer, so they have a team really supporting that relationship. Right, and so the, you know, so if they decide that one of their goals are, is to go out and buy a house, you're you're there to help them right. with that, yes. or make an acquisition for the business, you can help them with that. That's as right. Well. We're Hi, I'm Chris Lethem with the. Um, if they have financial planning needs or investment needs, we'll bring in the experts there, and so it's um, the business banking officer isn't out there alone. They have their expertise primarily in lending, um, but they'll bring in all, all the other experts that we have within the bank. Mm -hmm. And of course, lending is a, a big part of what the bank does. Right. Uh, and there are rules and regulations that are in place. That you know, a lot of people, it, you know, being a CPA and working with clients, they right. all come and they go, "Oh, I've got this great idea, and I need you know, hundred thousand dollars, and I can double uh -huh. my money and, and all this." Uh -huh. And then they get confused as to why the banks aren't so receptive to their idea. Mm -hmm. It's important for people to know, and you could probably say this better than I can. And it's not always the bank's rules and regulations that are being enforced. I mean, the Federal Reserve comes out and the OCC right. comes in and does their, their audits. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there's, there's very specific guidelines in what you are allowed to do before you can lend money to people. That's right. Um, we are highly regulated and we have to abide by those regulations. And we do get audited by the FDIC every year. Um, but yeah, we have to help our customers understand, you know, we don't say, well, it's, we can't do it because it's a regulation. It's important for us to, un to explain mm -hmm. so that they can then understand maybe it's not in their best interest to do something like this. Well, at least not right now. And, mm -hmm. and maybe there's some ways of tweaking things going forward that would maybe change that scenario right. or outcome a little bit. And, right. And that's part of that relationship you develop. Now, I know that, that this segment went really quick, and we're going to go on break real fast. Okay. Uh, but this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here today with Central Pacific Bank, and we're chatting not only about the success of Central Pacific Bank and the turnaround that they've gone through, which is truly amazing, uh, but we're also going to be talking a little bit about, you know, the products and services and how CPB can, can do good things for you. So we'll be right back in about a minute. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on ThinkTech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you, too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, Nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. And I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show, we're broadcasting live in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu out of the Pioneer Plaza. So if you want to come visit us, we're right there. All right, today we're talking with Central Pacific Bank, uh, the head of the business banking operations. Uh, and she was very involved in the turnaround and getting things back on track. 
Uh, and she's got a very dynamic group that she works with. And we were just getting into a little bit of some of the, the lending and, and some of the, uh, the, the relationships and partnering, if you will, and, and helping customers uh, define exactly what their needs are and, and how to get there. Um, now, in the, in the process of maybe going through the application process to get a loan and, and working with the bank to, to grow and expand, um, sometimes it gets a little, you know, in that gray area. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's, there's an organization out there that might be able to help with that mm -hmm. a little bit right. uh, called the Small Business Administration. You work very closely with them. Yes, um, the Small Business Administration is um, a wonderful partner for us. We do SBA guaranteed loans for small business. And basically what that means is that the bank will lend the money to the borrower and the SBA will guarantee 50% or more, depending on the type of program. Um, but we're very active in the SBA Express Loan Program, which um, is at 50% guarantee. And the SBA actually waived um, their SBA loan fees for loans 150000 and under mm. through the next fiscal year. So. Well, and that's significant because yeah. I know they can tend to be a little bit high, but they waived it in order to stimulate a little bit of business right, there. Right, and, and that's actually worked because I, I think the loan volume actually in Hawaii mm -hmm. has been setting some records. Yes, yes. In fact, you know, Central Pacific Bank has always been involved with small business. If you look at our roots, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but when the bank first started, we were founded by World War II heroes, veterans who came back. The and, World War II. Yes, and you know, they tried to get business loans to start their small business or home loans to buy a home and they were having difficulties. So they actually started their own bank. And so today the bank continues that legacy. So we're very proud. We, we have been the Small Business Administration Lender of the Year in our category two for 10 out of the last 12 years. You know, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that's a real track record. Yeah, and we're very, you know, happy that we can do that for our community because, as you know, Reg, small business is the engine, a small engine, but small but mighty engine in our community. Well, it is, and it, it you know, and if you use the definition at the federal level for small business, mm -hmm. I mean, that's 97% of all businesses in Hawaii, right. representing well over half of the... Uh, domestic product in Hawaii. Right. So it's it's truly a, a powerful, and it needs to be protected. Yes. It's, it's a powerful engine of the economy. It needs to be protected and, and groomed. Um, and I think that the same number, it's a little over 50% of the employment in right. Hawaii right. is with small business. Right. So it's not something to be ignored. Right. Uh, and you know, you mentioned, or I, I mentioned 442, and that's the roots of CPB. Mm -hmm. uh, but the SBA also has a, a veterans type of program as well. And right. they've got different programs to, to help minorities and, and women and, and veterans right. to get into business. Yeah. In fact, um, the SBA just ended its fiscal year, on, year end on September 30th, and they announced their awards. And Central Pacific Bank was also a veteran lender of the year. So mm -hmm. that was a nice. Um, nice recognition for us. It was. So we do try and, you know, with our business bankers, um, try and be a resource for their customers out there. And there are so many great um, services and resources for small business at free or very low cost. So SBA is one of them and mm -hmm. SCORE is another. Yeah, SCORE um, ACE is, is still out there. Yeah. Um, and I'm involved in another organization called the Patsy T. Mink mm -hmm. Center for Business and Leadership, which is funded by the SBA. And um, their goal is to help women in business. And they're very active. They've got a. They, they, I see them in different programs and events all over town. Yes. Yeah. So they offer a wonderful um, menu of um, classes and um, training and even counseling for small business owners, women who want to maybe start or are, or have started and need help, want to get to the next level. And we also launched this year um, our leadership program. So it's called the Patsy T. Mink Leadership Alliance. And you know, when we um, asked Patsy T. Mink's daughter, Wendy, if we could use her name when the business center started, um, it was important to her that the center not just be a center for business, but also a center for leadership. Mm -hmm. So um, earlier this year, we launched the first cohort, and we have 14 women who are um, up and comers, um, emerging leaders from their respective organizations. How long is the program for? It's a six month program. Wow. And so we're right about in the middle of the program and we spent a lot of time creating a curriculum that we found um, women leaders um, um, need as they're coming up through the ranks. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy about that very and good. we're right in the middle of our program now and um, looking forward to the next cohort next year. 
well, maybe when you get close to graduation, do they have awards as to top graduate or anything like that out of the program? I don't know if we have awards, but we'll definitely have a wonderful ceremony to celebrate. Well, we, we should maybe get somebody on the show to talk about you know, some yes. of the, the experiences that they had during the program and, yes. and maybe get somebody from the Patsy. You're on the board? I'm on the advisory board, and it's actually a, a program under the YWCA of Oahu. Mm -hmm. um, Terry Funakoshi is the executive director. And um, it would be great to bring some of the sure, participants. We, you can come back. Terry can come back. Yeah. We can bring one of the graduates, and we can talk about what kind of program it was and, and how beneficial it is. Yes. Yeah, yes. that'd be great. Um, so you, there's a lot of organizations out there, and it sounds like you or CPB or both are involved with all of these, mm -hmm. uh, promoting the business uh, activities and, and success of businesses in Hawaii. Right. So. Um, you know, I, I think CPV needs to be congratulated on that. That's uh, thank you. you know, and, and so, not only have you turned things around, got back on track, you're you're a strong organization again, but you're also mm -hmm. giving back to the community and mm -hmm. engaging with them. Yes. Um, w w when you're dealing with some of your customers uh, in the banking business banking world, mm -hmm. um, they come to you, and there are various degrees of of success or in the business cycle of their company. Right. Um, from your experience of all this, what do you think are some of the specific uh, challenges that they might be experiencing mm -hmm. that you've seen right. that um, you, know, you can give some advice on? Yeah, I, you know, business owners um, are so busy. They, they have to wear a lot of hats. And sometimes it's hard to take time out and work on your business. Is it in your business? Mm. And so I think it's important for them to do that. And I think you would appreciate and know that understanding their financial position mm -hmm. is very important. Um, business owners are not accountants necessarily, and that's okay, but they should, um, they should include somebody on their team, their CPA or their accountant, who can help them understand. I think it's important for them to know the basics so that they can really use their financial statement, hopefully they're doing it on a monthly basis, to help them make mm -hmm. decisions and help them maneuver. Um, and, there, and there are resources out there that we've talked about that can right. help them do that. So I think that's important. You know, management is really the key, I think, to a business success. Well, and it's hard to manage something if you can't measure it. Yes. And so having yeah. a measurement type of function within your organization, it doesn't necessarily have to be you know, measuring the P&Ls and the balance sheet, but you measure customer you, activities and right. number of accounts. There's, there's a sales focus, a market focus, a finance, yes. you know, but you have to be able to have that measurement capability in order to properly manage your organization. Right. And, you know, time management, you know, business owners, like I said, are busy. And so we try and provide services that will help them save time or save money. So mm -hmm. we've introduced Bob. Oh. Bob. <laughs> yes, Who, Bob. Bob? Is that a new hire? <laughs> it's not. As, for those who know Central Pacific Bank, it's not Bob Yee. It's actually the only Bob in the bank. Um, but Bob is our business online banking service, and it's a free service. It allows business owners to um, have multiple users, and you can actually set mm. access levels for security purposes. Um, Very necessary these days. Right. And you can do free bill payment, free mobile deposits. Wait, I'm hearing free in there. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and um, for a small fee, you can also do ACH transactions, uh -huh. which Good. is um, something that small business um, will, will save time for small business, time and money. So well, we're very excited about that. Now, I, I hope I don't step on my toes here, but can you do the picture of the check and deposit that? We can, too? yes. Wow. That's our mobile deposit service. That is so neat. I mean, Free. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> I've tried to play with it, deposit yeah. the same check four or five times. It doesn't work, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but it's kind of neat to be able to do that right. and go into the bank. Right. Yeah. Right. And so you see Bob is uh, something that's going to, I guess, continue to transition the bank into that electronic digital world. Right. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot more um, technology will continue to play a part as the bank evolves, evolves and um, provides services to our customers that um, they really um, appreciate, especially business owners, um, because they don't have the kind of time, you know, that um, others may and they're wearing so many hats and um, whatever we can do to help them, um, like I mentioned, save time, save money and do their business better. Well, and that's always a challenge. And, and you've got, you know, the demographics today, you know, you've got some of the older generation that likes more of a, uh, you know, 
go to the branch and see the person and right. talk to them and in some ways that's the way they socialize and then you got other people that they just love to take the pictures of the checks or they right. just automatic deposit into the account they never have right. to go in there and so you've got this opposing type of uh, process that you've got to have these relationships but yet you get these relationships in totally different ways. Right, right. And, you know, the millennials, my daughter's a millennial. I don't think she ever goes into the bank. But on the other hand, I tell her, you know, you should know someone there. Because yes. when you have a problem, <laughs> it's good to call someone who knows That's you right. and you That's know right. them. But, you know, my son's in San Francisco. One of my boys are in San Francisco. Uh -huh. and, and occasionally I might send him a couple dollars here and there. And so the first time he asked, I, I broke out my checkbook and I was going to write him a check. And, and he, he went a little bonkers. He said, what in the world are you doing? Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> just go on your phone and send me the money. And I go, wow. <laughs> so I, I learned real quick how to do that, which uh -huh. was probably a mistake. But yeah. My daughter will take any form of payment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Um, now there is, talk about the relationships. I mean, you're, you're transitioning or focusing on any particular groups these days, mm -hmm. uh, trying to, to get a foothold into any industry or profession? Yeah, we've been really focusing on um, the healthcare industry, specifically dentists and physicians. And uh, we found that, especially in, you know, there's a shortage of medical professionals in Hawaii. Yeah. And so we want to make sure as um, dentists, for example, as they're retiring, that we can help um, young dentists acquire mm. these practices so that they can That's right. maintain the practice. Facilitate that transition. Yeah. yeah. Succession. Right. Very good. You know, and my mistake, we just got into a really big conversation. I'd love to continue, but you know what? We've run out of time. Oh, shucks. So we just went quick. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I think the dentist and the healthcare industry uh, needs a lot of help in a lot of different ways. Yes. You know, and whatever, and it, there's a direct benefit to the community when we're able to do that. Yes. So we need, uh, I think I applaud you for NCPB for taking a look at that. Um, but this is Reg Baker and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 uh, and we focus on success stories in Hawaii. And we just had a, a really great success story here with Susan and with CPB. Uh, we wish them all the well and uh, in the future and hopefully we can have them come back again. Until next week, aloha. <laughs>